Hey ADF fans, today we're going to talk about overloading a data flow so that you can make that data flow a little bit more performant. The reason you'd want to do this is because uh, when data flows execute from a pipeline, if you sequence those data flows, uh, you have to switch context between each of those and that can take a little bit longer for the pipeline to complete. But if you can put that logic into a single data flow, then you can leverage that same Spark cluster that is spun up for all of that operation to happen at one time. Now, I don't recommend doing this um, if you have a lot of disparate logic within your data flow. This should still be, you should still think about um, separating your data flows into logical units. But if you look at the screen that I have as an example of right now, what I have on there is essentially three different streams with three different sinks. And they're all performing an operation that is all logically grouped together. Conceivably, I could have done this as three different data flows. This will perform better as a single data flow. Now, when you overload a data flow, keep in mind that you should have, and you'll need to have, an Azure integration runtime that will spin up a Spark cluster in the background, in the back end, that will be large enough for you to be able to overload that with a lot of data and a lot of different operations, which means that you'll need a um, sizable integration runtime, both for debug and operationalized pipeline runs. Here I am in my debug mode and I have set an integration runtime one, I called it, and that is memory optimized with about 64 cores. That doesn't mean that's the size you need. General purpose is probably fine, but you will need enough cores so that if you're going to overload a lot of activity in a single data flow, you'd want to have a size that is large enough to do it. The, uh, the default Azure auto integration runtime is not sized for that. That is sized for essentially sampling of data on a much smaller scale. Okay, now if you're going to use this method to have more performant data flows, that is overload your data flows. Another thing to keep in mind, besides the size integration runtime, keeping to logical units within your uh, data flow. The other thing to keep in mind is that there are two uh, very important features that we're going to talk about that you'll want to leverage. Now the first I'm going to highlight in this demo, then I'm going to go to another demo to highlight the other feature. The first feature I want to talk about is called sync ordering. So if you click on the white space on your data flow and you click on settings, you will see uh, the sync ordering here under settings. Now the reason why this is important is because the logic I have in my data flow, whereas these previously were three different data flows, to get these to work together into a single data flow, I have to make sure that sync one gets written to first, sync two second, and then sync three third. And the reason is this, let me explain to you what I'm doing. I'm taking my flat file, my text limit file of movies, and then I am uh, changing some of that data. I am creating a new year. Uh, I'm essentially taking all the uh, movies from the year of 1980, and I'm going to make those all say 2021 by using the alter row as an update. So the update then will write to the database that I have as my sync and we'll update that, uh, that date for those years, or essentially the year for those movies, right? Now, I have to have this happen first because the second stream in my data flow is taking that same SQL movies data set as the source now, and it's filtering just the new 2021 movies that I had created from 1980. And then I'm writing that to a file, and I'm writing it as a single file right here up into single file. So this second stream will only work as long as there are 2021 movies already in the database, which means that this has to happen first. So right order is one. This is second right order two, because my final stream, which again used to be a separate data flow, will look for the outputs being that previous streams file. So this file is writing Output to single file is movies 2021. The path for that file is coming from the data sets. And in my source three, I specified that exact path in the wildcard path. I'm setting it there because I'm using the same folder out data set that I used in the second stream, which is not define a file. And you don't define files when you output within a data flow. You want to define folders and let data flow write the files. Now this file will not exist at this point in time because this has to run and execute in order for that file to be created. So I won't be able to debug this or to be able to data preview it, but you can still make this work through sync ordering. Now what I can do is I can say aggregate to give me the row count and write that row count to a new file called movies2021 row count.csv. This will all work in sequence. Okay, so when you leverage sync ordering this way, it allows you to do more overloading of your data flows. And if you look at what I did here with my movie analytics, a pipeline. I'm running that SQL movies. When I run this, it takes about uh, two and a half minutes to execute. I'm going to move this over because I don't, I know I don't have this on the full screen. 
Okay, that should fit better. And you can see that each sync then ran in sequence. So that's fine. So that's how you can get that overloaded logic within a single data flow. Now, what I want to do with my next trick is I want to show you the second feature that helps a lot with overloading data flows, and that is run in parallel. Run in parallel is actually an option that is from the pipeline, but it allows you to have a lot of logic within a single data flow that can write in, uh, uh, that can write in parallel, essentially. So for this example, I'm going to move over to my loans uh, demo. And what you see here is that I have this sync, which is writing against single files. And remember, single files in um, Dataflow, when you're writing out in the data lake that way, very slow operation. Um, and it is the, the, probably the worst performing feature within the sync. But it's something that you'll commonly need to do for some use cases. So that's fine. In this case, I want to do it. I have to do it twice because I have a split here where I'm splitting on the different term types. I'm writing out a single file here called term36 and then a single file down. This one is called terms.csv. So both these are writing to single file, and we even give you the warning here about the performance that you're going to take to write to single file. Now, what would happen is if you just execute this from a pipeline, so let me go over to the pipeline that executes this data flow called loans pipeline, and on the settings for the data flow activity, you will see under sync properties this option here of run in parallel. The default is off. So what would happen is those two single file output syncs would run sequentially. So if it takes two minutes to write the first one, you have to wait for that one and then the second one to execute. So that would be a total of four minutes. However, if you click on run in parallel, because those are from the same stream, let me go back to it, these can now execute and write to the data lake at the same time. So it'll take half the amount of time. Those will write, the, the total time will be two minutes. So run in parallel will let you have those syncs run at the same time. And again, that's very important for overloaded data flows. All right, so that's a quick look at ways to um, uh, get an overall pipeline with data flows to work a little bit faster by using uh, the concept of overloading data flows with run in parallel, as well as with uh, taking advantage of the sync ordering feature. Okay, thanks for watching. See ya.